this uh, session we will be uh, looking at uh, another uh, another group of algorithms associated with the classification of the data right we have already uh, looked at uh, nearest neighbors algorithm we have looked at naive bayes algorithm for doing the classification of the data we have also looked at the decision trees for classification of the data so one more important uh, group of formulas or group of uh, techniques for doing the classification is using the rules so we will be seeing how these rules are different from any of these majorly you will always uh, compare the rules with decision trees so where are they good at where are they not good at when i compare them with decision trees those are the various aspects that we would be looking at so what do we mean by a classification rule how is it different from decision trees what is the strategy the classification rules actually get into we have seen that the decision trees get into a strategy called divide and conquer whereas because they divide the data into uh, subgroups and based on the subgroups they try to match a particular uh, feature uh, and they try to map it to the predicted class whereas here it is purely separate and conquer there is no division right there is uh, no tree structure that is getting formed it is the data is separated based on one or more variables and based on that the mapping to the predicted class the mapping to the decision class is typically done so we'll try to understand how the separate and conquer algorithm works and how is it typically different from the divide and conquer of the decision trees so here we will look at two important algorithms of the same one being the one rule algorithm so there is only one single rule typically people call it as 1r or 1r like this so initially we will have something called 0r which is like where there are no rules at all i will uh, look at it as a base i will look at uh, what is the base classification accuracy that is no rules all of them i classify them into the maximum frequency class so if i am looking at uh, default versus no default and if i see 70% uh, of the people are no default 30% of the people are default any new data that i am getting i will classify them as no default only that is the zero r kind of an algorithm but when i am looking at one rule algorithm so i am uh, i am creating a rule based on one variable or one feature and i would like to see whether that one feature can segregate the data much more better compared to a zero rule algorithm so we will try to see the one rule algorithm and based on that we'll see what could be the limitation that this particular algorithm can carry so on the top of that an improvised version of the one rule algorithm is the ripper algorithm so we'll spend some time try to understand the ripper algorithm so these two are two important implementations of the rules based algorithm similarly there is a way that i can generate the rules from the decision trees itself so even my decision trees can generate the rules for me so if i am trying to generate the rules from the decision trees what are the advantages and what are the disadvantages associated with those rules and once we have a basic conceptual understanding of all these aspects we'll take up a data set and on that data set we'll try to execute this whole process so with that basis let's get started so if i have to understand the classification rules so the simple fundamental here is 
whatever is the knowledge that I am capturing from the data. So that whole knowledge is taken in the form of if-else statements. So if age is greater than 50, then the person will default. If age is less than or equal to 50, the person will not default. So some kind of simple or complex if-else statements are typically created and based on that, we are assigning a class default or no default to the unlabeled example. So instead of a tree structure, we create a set of rules. The rules are created in the form of if-else statement. So we have an antecedent and a consequence. The antecedent is if age is greater than 50. And the consequent is the class, which is the default. So it would be interpreted primarily like if this happens, then that happens. If age is greater than 50, then the person will default and so on. So in the antecedent, instead of one single feature, we will have a combination, right? We can have a combination of the features. So the more and more combinations of features I am using, the more complex will be my rule. But consequent is always the class. So default versus no default. So the class that I am trying to assign when this rules conditions are typically met. So this is the way my classification rules are generally created. So I will create some kind of a knowledge from the data. The knowledge is created in the form of rules. And those rules are generally used for future action. So generally, there are applications wise, I can use that for customer segmentation. I am looking at the characteristics of groups of people. And based on that characteristics, I will try to say this particular product will be purchased by this group or this particular product will not be purchased by this group. Right? So similarly, Whatever are the conditions, if I want to look at the stock prices increasing, decreasing, large drops, large increases, I want to see what are the conditions that precede the large drops or large increase in the stock prices. So all these kinds of things can very well be targeted using the classification rules. Now generally, the classification rules are compared with respect to the decision tree. Now, in a decision tree, as I have already highlighted, the rules typically come from top to bottom. Right? The segregation of the data is typically done like this. And here, the decision at the leaf node, I am actually making a decision of either default or no default kind of stuff. Whereas in case of rule, we don't have this kind of a tree structure. It is purely standalone. So there is no top to bottom kind of a process. That's where it is called separate and conquer rather than divide and conquer. So the result is more and more parsimonious, more and more trustworthy, more and more reliable, direct, easy to understand rather than are compared to a decision tree. So that is where some positive thing comes up with respect to the rules. In case of decision tree, because of this entire structure, there are some kind of biases that are being introduced. Whereas in case of rule learning, I can very well avoid that bias quite comfortably. Now, those are some of the positive sides of the rule-based algorithms compared to the decision tree approach. So, again, till now, whatever we have seen, when I look at the nearest neighbors kind of algorithm, they require most of the data to be numeric in nature. Even if it is non-numeric, I have to convert it into dummy variable. If I am talking about a naive bias algorithms, it expects that all the variables are to whatever extent they are categorical in nature. Even if they are not categorical, I have to convert them into categories. 
I have to convert them into categories so that the probabilities of each of the groups can very well be computed. Similarly, when I am talking about the decision trees, the system will, uh, even there, the variables should be to large extent numeric in nature. Right? If they are more categorical, the model becomes more and more complicated and difficult to understand. Whereas, when I look at uh, the classification rules, I see that it is very much prominent, very much applicable when my features are more or less normal. Almost all the features are nominal kind of features. Then I can very well apply the classification rules 